an eagle it was calling like a woodpecker it was calling like a babbler and uh, we were mesmerized At that time, I was accompanied by M. R. Madhe Gowda, and he said that you should do your PhD on this bird, ah, huh? because it's it's doing its PhD on all the other birds. I'm Samira Agniotri. I'm trained as an ecologist, and I have followed racket-tailed rongos for most of my adult life. very often you hear racketail rongos before you see them really veteran bird watchers have been fooled into thinking that there are 10 birds in this in this patch and i should go and see them and once once they go closer there's only one racketail rongo doing their thing it's very vocal so you will hear it before you see it and when you see it uh, i mean you will fall in love with it even more glossy iridescent black bird with jaunty crest and beautiful long tail feathers salim ali had written about this uh, he described it as it looks like two bees following a black bird because of the yeah i found broadly that it mimicked in three situations one was during the breeding season as i said when it was defending its territory and you know looking for mates it also makes a lot of mimicry when it's a part of what are called mixed species flocks or mixed hunting parties which are these aggregations or dynamic associations of different species of birds feeding together moving together through the forest and the third time i saw a lot of mimicry was when they were defending their nests the mimicry that they do in with the around these flocks is for two reasons one to locate them so if I, i'm a racketail rongo and i'm hungry and i'm i want to forage with these flocks maybe jungle babblers because they look for these insects right and that disturbs a lot of insects the the, the <laughs> leaf throwing that babblers do so when racketail rongo is a jungle babblers he will he or she will uh, make the contact calls just like the babblers babblers do this contact call which is like eh, eh, eh. Okay, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. And Rakhi Dilrongo hangs out with them and says, "I'm here. I'm here. I'm here." Similarly, woodpeckers. Rongos love to hang out with woodpeckers. And on that occasion, the Rakhi Dilrongo mimicked the woodpecker's call almost twenty times until it heard a woodpecker call in response somewhere, and then it flew in that direction. There is one more element to this multi-species association, and that is sentinel behavior or watching out for danger. Drongos, in many languages, they are referred to as kotwal or uh, policemen uh, in some way because they are so fearless and uh, they attack birds and things that are much larger than themselves, and so that is also uh, a reason why. Uh, you know if i was a babbler or any other bird i would hunt a drongo around even if sometimes they take more food than they should to tie it all up the mimicry uh, is used probably to attract mates and influence mating decisions and defend territories but they also use mimicry to talk to other species and hang out with them bird brain which is used as an insult is actually the opposite 
I think birds are much much more intelligent and complex than we give them credit for and then we know. In one of the talks that I gave over my work at a school, uh, I small three third standard boy he's i asked them why do you think the drongo is mimic and he said it's simple to make friends with the birds and i think i mean the, the scientific theory aside i think i must accept that uh, as an explanation